Hello people and welcome to another video of Programmer's Corner. In this video we'll take a look at how to find the un all the unique characters in a given string. So to begin with we have a given input string and here we have three methods and all these three methods do the same exact thing but they're implemented in three different ways. So in the first method we use hash maps. In the second method we use an array and the third method we use a substring method of the string class and the index of method. So to begin with let's see how we find all the unique characters using a hash map. So the unique all the find all unique method takes in string as a parameter and it returns a void. Uh, it declares two hash maps the helper and the helper and the helping helper. So the helper method the helper hash map will have all the characters that I have found and the number of times I have found them. And the helping helper will keep track of the first occurrence of a, of a letter that I found in order. So let's say if I have A, B, and C, the helper from the helper hash map will have A comma one, B comma one, and C comma one. Whereas the helping helper will have one comma A, two comma B, and three comma C because that's the order in which I have I found A, B, C for the first time. If I have A, B, C, A, the helper will be a comma 2 b comma 1 and c comma 1 whereas the helping helper will be the same thing 1 comma a 2 comma b and 3 comma c because even though i found a at the end of c in the string a b c a the helping helper has only those characters in order that i have found for the first time so a b c i have already found a in the beginning so i, I don't need to update that so now how we use that to find all the unique characters in a given string. So we have a count variable of type int which is initialized to 1 and we use that to count to keep to iterate through the helping helper or to basically keep count of how many elements have been put in the helping helper and defining their or stating their in uh, stating their key which is of type integer. We start iterating through the iterating through the string so we take d first in the initial state and we have two cases what if the helper is empty what if the hash map is empty what we do next what we do then so what we do is we have we use a function contains key which basically checks whether a given key that is in this case a character a string it is in the helper hash map if it is in the helper hash map we go to the else part but let's say if it's not in the helper hash map so that's a new character so what we put that into a helper hash map with its count one and we set the helping helper because we know that if it's not in the helper that means it's certainly not in the helping helper hash map. So we use the count that we have. So in this case the count initial is one because it's the first element. So D is not in the helper as well as in the helper helping helper. So we insert D with a count of one because that's the first occurrence of D. And since it's also since it's the first occurrence of D, I'm gonna go here and put that into the helping helper with count one, and then I'm gonna increment the count. Slash my helping helper has one element. Now, what if now comes the S? S is not again in the helper hash map, so we go and put S in here with a count of one because that's the first occurrence. And since it's the first occurrence, I put count which is now two, and then I put S in the helping helper hash map so that now d and s are in range of d r s are in order and these are the first in order characters now what if we come across d again well d is in the helping hash map helping is sorry d is in the helper hash map so you go to the helper you get the occurrence you increment the occurrence of that character and you put it back in so now the helper will have d comma 2 and s comma 1 and we keep on doing it until we reach the end of the string so now we populate both the hash maps so now what we do with that is we use the helping helper hash map we use the size of that and we start from 1 and we go all the way to the end and we say that well if the character at helping helper so the first character at helping helper will be d so if that first character 
Now, if, if, if we want to find the count of D, now I could have used collections, but collections are not sorted. So they basically come in an unsorted form. So I have used these two hash maps. So one keeps track of the number of elements, the way in which I have put the elements. And the second one keeps track of how many times each letter or each element has occurred in a given string. So I start with, and that's why the count. So I start with one and I keep on going. So I take the element along based on its based on its uh, index key based on its index. So one has D, and then I use that D to get the count from the helper. So this is a two pass in where I pass in a hash map in a method of a hash map. So this gets me the string which is D because J is one. So the first character of helping ha helping helper is D. I get that and then using that D I get the count because the first element of helper is D comma the number of times D has repeated or I have seen that D. So this goes in here and it does not return one. So if it does not return one I know that D is no longer unique. There are multiple occurrences of D in that string so I know that I go to the next character. I have S. Is S unique as you see here? No, S is not unique because you can see S is repeated here. So what you do is you ignore the S as well. You don't need to go to like you're not gonna go at D because D has already been repeated again. I'm not going over the string, I'm going over the helping, I'm going over the helping helper. So the third element most likely is gonna be F. And again F is again repeated. The next element is gonna be K. K is again there is a repetition. Then the next element is going to be G, the unique one. Well, G is not repeated, so G is going to get printed. Then J is going to get, is not going to get printed. T is going to get printed. O is not going to get printed. J is again, well, J is not going to print it. So E is going to get printed because E is unique as well. Then hash is going to get printed, 5, 8, at the rate. All those three elements are going to get printed. Q is going to get printed because that's not there. Y and V, those things are going to get printed. So if you run this, let me comment these out. As you can see, G, T, E, hash. Uh, let's go to the string. So G, T, because T is not repeated. E, because E is not repeated. Hash, 5, 8, at the rate. Uh, Q, Y, and V. So these are all unique characters. So they are actually printed out. So if you see, we are basically using a helping helper hash map, which keeps track of all the occurrences in order, all the first occurrences in order, and then use that and query the helper hash map, which keeps track of how many times each character in that string has been repeat has occurred. So after seeing how to find all the unique characters in a given string using a hash map, let's take a look at how to do the exact same thing using an array. So we have a function called find all unique un arrays, which takes in string s as a parameter and it returns a void. In the function, what it does is we create a helper array of the same size as that of the string length. And we initialize all the indexes of that array to minus one. So basically initializing everything to false or uh, well we can't say false because minus it doesn't have any value so we initialize everything to minus one and once we come here we say that we go through each of the element in a given string and we say and we see if that specific element exists anywhere else in the string so that's why we have the second for loop in the given for loop so initially what we see is we f take the first element in our case it's d so it's going to see that is the helper of i, which is zero, is the same as is on is is this at this point unique? Well, in this case, it is. So we go in there, we go inside the for loop, and we start from the right of the string. We start iterating through the string from the right, and then we see well, is this equal to d? No. Is this equal? Is this equal? No. So here, this is equal. So we mark. the helper index, the helper 
at that index to be zero. So now wherever this D has occurred, that index is going to be marked as zero. So when we visit this index, we know the D has already been occurred. This letter is already present in the string. We keep on doing it until we hit our current index, which is I. So until we hit that point, we keep on seeing whether the whether this element exists anywhere else in the string and we mark that place as invalid or in this case zero and we also set the flag as true because we know that since I have found this position to be valid or like this position has this the position at the element at this position exists somewhere else in the string I'm gonna get out of here and I'm gonna say since the flag is true I'm gonna mark the current position as zero as well now let's take an ex let's take a character that doesn't exist so G so let's see zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So G is at position six. And if we could see the entire string, G exists nowhere else in the string rather than at this position. So as you can see, since this is minus one, it's gonna execute this for loop, but it's not gonna find it's not gonna execute this if statement inside that for loop since there is no element within the string other than position 6 where the element g exists so the flag is going to be false and this thing is going to remain minus 1 we go to the next one now let's say we visit uh, let's say we visit position the third the second position that's the the element is d so what happens is since we have already marked it as 0 there is no point in going through the entire process again. So we already know that that element as we would seen in the previous iteration already exists in that string and we had already marked it in the previous position as zero. This if statement is now gonna be executed and it's gonna directly go to flag, which again won't matter much because the thing has already been marked as zero the helper i has already been marked as zero so we go on so in this case if we are we have already seen a character in a given string we don't only mark that character but we also mark the character where we where it's been replicated so in this case we mark we not only mark the index of d at this position but we also mark it at this position we also mark it at this position the same thing goes for character s the same thing goes for any character that has been repeated so after execution at the end what we see is we only take those into account those elements into account whose helper index or whose helper value is minus one so the helper value of d in this case is well at, at index zero is going to be is zero so it's, this is not going to execute the helper value of s is zero the d again is zero so and so forth so we are only going to get those elements that are unique in this given string. So if you execute this, you can see that it's the same as the previous. So if you look at the previous one, uh, I commented it out. If you look at the, if you look at both of those, they produce the same result. The, these are unique characters in a given string, and with using two different kind of algorithms we are obtaining the same results so after seeing how to find all the unique characters in a given string using a hash map and a array now we'll take a look at how to find all the unique characters using us using two functions of a substring class sorry two functions of a string class substring and index of functions so in this case what we do is in the find unique character method we take the input as a st we take the string as input and we return void so unlike the, the previous two methods where we actually loop twice uh, first to get all the first to get all the count of how many elements are there and then an a another one to basically print them print all the unique ones in this case what we do is we loop only once through the entire string well, I'm not considering the loops that happen in these methods where we actually 
they, they actually do it because that's inbuilt Java method. So we don't have to write additional loops just for that. So what we do is, at when we select a point, when we select the element in a string, we break the string at that point itself. So at the beginning, what we do is we take the element, we take the substring s at a given string, at a given at a given point. So we have zero to i. So i in this case is zero. So in this case, we're not going to take any string because the substring class, what it does, the substring method, what it does is it takes the string from substring from zero to the position of i the position before i so in this case it's going to be zero to i minus one the same thing goes here it takes the substring from i plus one to the and it excludes the length so it's going to take s dot s dot length minus one so that's the string that's going to be included so here what it does is it takes it takes the left substring from that given index and it sees that the character of at index i exists in that string if it does not exist it's return minus one but since there is no substring in this case since it's the start of the string it's by default going to return minus one since it's not going to be able to find this character in that given string and but now everyone think well this is wrong because the character might exist in this part of the string so that's what we're going to check so what it does is now here since it takes the left and this basically checks the left string sub substring and this checks the right substring from that given point so what this does is for this part of code does is it takes this string from the next character of a current of a current character so it takes anything from i plus one and it ends at the length of the string so the last character of the string so it checks what it does is it takes that substring and it checks whether this current character exists in that string if it does it's going to return the index and it's not going to be minus one but if there is no character of that sort then it's going to return minus one and if we are at the first character in our case it's again t so what happens is it will try to find the first occurrence of d and it's not going to be minus one so we know that this character is not the character we are looking at we go to the next character and on, once we go to the next character what we see is again we break the string into two we're going to look at the left and we're going to look at the right in this case it's s well the left one is going to give us minus one because s does not exist anywhere here but in the right it exists so it's not going to give us minus one and we know that's not the character we are looking at we keep on doing this until we get the characters that we are looking for or we get the characters that exist neither on the left and neither on the right so they are unique to the given spot so in our case we have ex we have characters such as g which are unique to the given spot hash 5 8 at the rate q y and v these are the characters that are given that are unique to the given spot they neither exist on the right neither exist on the left and we own this basically iterates through the string only once and we do not have to iterate again through the entire string again i'm not including the iterations that happen in these methods themselves because these are inbuilt iterations we don't have to write any iterations so if we execute this as you see we again get the same output now let's play around with the input a bit let's try to add a in the a at the start and see if it prints a because a is again unique to the entire string and if we iterate and if we run this we can see all of those three print a all three use different logics in it and logics in them and they basically give the same output so the first one uses hash maps second one uses an array and the third one uses substring and index of methods so this is the video to find the unique characters all the unique characters in a given string we use three methods hash map the array and the substring and index of character in index of method so if you like the video please comment share and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you for watching